I want to talk about triggers, what triggers you, and how to understand what are your triggers and what to do about it. This is really important. You may not even know you have triggers. You may not be aware of them. Triggers are those things which cause us to act in a certain way. There could be triggers which are causing you to act more compassionately or with more integrity, or like when you get good association or you're in a very spiritual environment like the Dom, and your good qualities come out. There are triggers which make, make us angry, cause us to be resentful, triggers which cause us to say the wrong things, things we later regret having said. So... The other day in class, a devotee said that it almost felt like arrogance was better for her because when she becomes humble, she realizes she's arrogant. And then she realizes what's wrong with her. And then when she realizes what's wrong with her, she becomes hopeless and depressed. So we don't want to be hopeless. We don't want to be depressed. But what she's saying is, almost indirectly, arrogance is better. If I stay in the illusion that I'm great, I'm more inspired. If I get out of the illusion that I'm actually hum you know, trying to be more humble, see my faults, then I become discouraged. So she was trying to figure that out, and I said, you know what? This is a trigger. You have to understand this is a trigger. Your low self-esteem is being triggered. Because when you see your fault, you can't deal with it. So you're thinking, better not see it. That's not Krishna consciousness. Those are, we're giving examples of so many humble devotees. They weren't depressed. So I was making the point, this is a trigger for you, that this situation has triggered your low self-esteem. It has nothing to do with the philosophy. This has triggered your sense of, um, I'm not worthy or I'm not good, and then I get discouraged. But that's a psychological thing. We don't see that in Takaharita, Sanatana Goswami, or any great devotee. When they become humble, we don't see that it's a problem, do we? Not at all. So, don't blame the things that trigger you on the things that trigger you. Try to understand these triggers are connecting with something inside of you and causing you to act that way. In most cases, of course, if it's a good trigger, no problem. But if it's a bad trigger, then see it for what it is, that it's triggering something in me. And so this is not a fault or a problem in our philosophy. It's a fault in me. And I'm reacting to something which is true or pure, but I'm reacting in a very unhealthy way. And then I think, well, it's better I'm not humble because if I'm humble, I become Oh, she said, hopeless. If I become humble, I become hopeless. But that's not our philosophy. If I become humble, I become closer to Krishna, I become inspired. That's our philosophy, right? So it's interesting. So how do you see your triggers? What are those things that upset you? Why do they upset you? And if you have a tendency to blame those things for causing your problem, it's a mistake. Those things may be a catalyst for something that's existing within you. So when you're being triggered, just stop. Don't blame it on the trigger. Try to understand what's going on inside. So in this case, it was obvious that this devotee had issues with self-esteem, couldn't look at her faults. And so I gave the example that let's say we're on our way somewhere. We're going to Vrindavan and we're flying. And the whole time we're going to Vrindavan, we're thinking, the plane is so crowded, the airport is so crowded, it's such a long trip, I have to sit in this uncomfortable seat for so long, and then when we get to Delhi, it's going to be so hot, the air is going to be polluted, and then we have to drive to Vrindavan, and then we have to unpack and find our place. We'd be thinking, like, something is wrong with the way you're thinking. You're going to Vrindavan. You should be excited. Yeah, I know I'm going to Vrindavan, but the trip is bad. 
So we're all going back to Godhead, and on the way we're saying, yeah, but I'm this, but I'm that. We're looking at all these bad things. But you're on the way back to Godhead, so it doesn't matter. It really doesn't. Because if you keep in the process, you will get there. So what does it matter if it's a long trip or there's a few roadblocks? You're on the road to Vrindavan. You're on the road back to Godhead. So if we lose that focus and we focus on what's wrong with ourselves, we can't even enjoy the ride, and we should be very happy that we're on the road, right? So I just want to say, whatever faults you have or impurities, it's not a problem as long as you're on the road. As long as you're doing the process, you're fine. Don't worry about it. Hare Krishna. You can be humble. It's okay. You can see your faults. It's okay. Don't worry. You can do that. It doesn't have to destroy you. Hare Krishna.